gentlemen, I want to continue our conversation and I want to talk about the recent um, Starfield Shattered Space uh, Direct, if you will. We got a chance to see a lot of gameplay. We got a lot. We got a chance to see during this direct that was uh, done and posted by Bethesda themselves. We got a breakdown of what is being, in, what's going to be in here. The House of Varun being obviously the main focus. It's a, it's an organization that is, uh, you know, sheltered. They're very secretive. This area that we're going to be in is going to be handcrafted. It's not going to be procedurally generated like Starfield's planets are. So that everything is going to be there with purpose. Uh, the story that's going to be tell, told is going to be on this one planet. I'm very much, ex I'm very much excited for that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be things to find. I'm sure there's going to be exploration with the new vehicle, the Rev8. Uh, this is actually happening on the 30th of September. But Umbra, I'm going to go reverse order. I want to go to you first on this because you made mention of something that was a bit odd. Uh, now, you mentioned Clobriel, right? Now, this this was Clobriel responding to who I believe is above board. Now, if you like insider gaming or you don't, that's entirely up to you. I'm never going to tell you what to read, what not to read. But insider gaming posted something that really set off the community in a, in a bad way. And... Uh, Clobriel responded to it, and, and like Umbra, I, I'm glad that he did because it needed to be said. Now, um, basically, the title for the article is One Year Later, Will Shattered Space Save Starfield? Now, my, my thing is this. They've had over 12 million people play this game, um, and it's going to continue to grow. That's a lot of people playing a game that was dead on arrival, according to the press. Uh, IGN, if I recall, gave it not one, but two sevens. They gave it one seven on the Xbox, one seven on the PC, because, well, Dan Stapleton wanted to kind of give it to Xbox, and he did. I played the game, and I have a mere, and I'm not being facetious, folks, a mere five days and like 12 hours into it. Uh, that is small potatoes compared to other people. Like, for instance, Infinite Umbra, who has probably double or even triple that. Um, and I'm excited for this. And, of course, the, 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 the slapback, if you will, uh, from Clobriel is, uh, says this. It sure as hell won't save it from the, uh, this super weird and goofy Starfield clickbait obsession since day one. Starfield is great. It always was. And thanks to consistent updates, mod support, and the upcoming expansion, it soon can be amazing. Now, of course, the direct uh, uh, Umbra that they had was, you know, it's it's a video. You go and you watch it. I've watched it twice. I've watched it twice, one as a fan, and, well, second time to make sure that I had some keep talking points. Uh, and it, it's well worth the watch. Uh, and, and again, folks, this is not picking on anybody. This is not console warring or my leg in the sand against journalistic ridiculousness. Paul Tassi. Now, I like Paul, right? Paul Tassi is a journalist. He currently writes for Forbes. Um, I don't agree with a lot of his things, um, but he, he I would imagine he doesn't agree with a lot of my points either. But I do like Paul as a journalist. I, do, I will read his stuff. Well, he posted this morning, you know, obviously – adding the Starfield, um, uh, you know, direct. And he says this, Umbra, I'm very curious about the attach rate of significant paid DLC to a game most people got for free on Game Pass. Like, why? Um, now, again, folks, I, I'm not a tactician. I'm not a mathematician or a business major. Uh, but one of the things that I saw almost like it, hap it happened on a consistent basis was people played Starfield through Xbox Game Pass but bought the $30 upgrade to get all of the extra, the, the early access, to get the extra equipment, and of course, more importantly, to get the first DLC called Shattered Space, which is included in this. And it sold very well for them. 
the so same thing is going to happen with Call of Duty when it, when Call of Duty releases in October. There are going to be a lot of folks that are inclined to spend that 30 bucks on the Vault Edition because they're getting the game in their service and they're more likely to buy that and spend more money on DLC through microtransactions for the online play. It's business 101 and it just freaking works. So I don't understand this comment. I don't understand what he's asking for. Uh, I mean, he he's a journalist, so he probably has access a lot more than I do. And I was easy, it was able to very easily find how many people bought the DLC. Umbra, let's let's talk about yeah. the House of Varun. Uh, this is this is this is a massive DLC. This is going to sell well, and it's going to bring a lot of people back to uh, to Starfield. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I'm super excited for this, man. I watched a video clip. I watched it again before we started. And what I'm most impressed by, and I'm pretty sure most of us are in the same boat, the color palette they chose for this. Yes. Like, it's really vibrant. Those dark right? purples. They have yeah. different shades of violet. Yeah, it a lot looks of the phenomenal. Blues. Yes. It's, it's, it seems uh, kind of a big contrast, or a stark at least contrast, become, compared to the to the vanilla game. Like, you play the vanilla game, you're going to find some beautiful shots. You're going to find some beautiful planets, things of that nature. And and you're going to see distant suns and things of the nature and stars or whatever. But uh, what I'm most impressed by is the the color palette choice and option. And the lighting is just ridiculously good. Um, the guns are sounding as great as I remember. Mind you, I have, what, 334 hours in this game. I am going to jump back in and start all the way over and putting uh, the Star Wars mod on mine. I'm going to have... This time I'm for real. Like now I have my PC. I'm, going, I'm yeah. starting over on a PC. I'm putting all the yeah. Star War mods on it. I'm going to have the Millennium Falcon I, of, of our dreams. Not a you know, not a fan made one, I, but I would go with I, I would go with Boba Fett ship, but that's just me. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I was the slave one. <laughs> hey, they, I think they might have that in there. It's the slave one. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to do all of that, and I'm definitely going to get into that, man. I, uh, they speak a lot about you know us, us exploring House Varun, and, and that's one of the things that was that was left as a mystery in the main game. So I'm loving a lot of that. Uh, it it also has this kind of uh, mysterious, kind of creepy thing going about it. Seeing how he they were in the shadows and investigating this this place inside of this facility and things like that before being KO'd, I guess, by somebody. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering how it's all going to play out. A lot of, uh, a lot of mystery. And also we saw, I think they showed some new, uh, alien life that they, that we'd be, we'd be com combating if I'm not mistaken, the last little enemy or not little, but enemy they showed looked like something out of, out of aliens. Yeah. Uh, we've never, I've never seen that. I've never, I, well, I've never come across it, but then again, Starfield is, is massive. Right. So True, but they did yeah. say that we're going to be new, you know, new creatures. Yeah, so it, it's a it's a lot of that. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm really excited for it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to do great. It's coming out, what's this, the 30th, right? So, yeah. we September 30th. It's been a solid month. I'm really excited to jump back into that and really see what they what that how explorable, explorable that is. Also, too, they said we, we allowed to leave and things of that nature. So we're not, like, stuck into that, uh, I guess, mission, if you will, once once we started up. It's a little unique in that way. So I like a lot about what I'm hearing with it. I'm just yeah, just really excited to jump in. Listen, Jamie, let's let's get your your hot take on what has been said about Starfield, and more importantly, your excitement. Because remember, we're 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 literally 13 days away from the release of this uh, of of the first expansion called Shattered Space. It looks really freaking good. Again, it's. Bethesda knows how to tell a story, and this isn't, you know, again, will there be world-trotting uh, adventures? Yes. Can you take your spaceship out and go fly and do something else? According to Umbra, you can. But this is an adventure. This is a story. This is a one planet handcrafted, so there's not going to be any procedural generation. It's what they're putting into this all is there to make sense and tell a story. Bethesda knows how to tell one really well. I'm super stoked for this. Let's get your thoughts. You know, before I get into the whole like reason why I'm excited for it, I want to kind of talk about the whole Paul Tassi thing. Please. The attach rate thing, because that was an extremely short-sighted uh, thing to say. 
Of course it because, was. Yeah. Uh, because like I like to pay attention to numbers because I'm a bit of a nerd. And <laughs> the truth <laughs> is that like Starfield had this, and I'll get into how, why so many people were hating on it, but like before Starfield came out, on its official launch day, over 1 million people were playing it. Right, so that was people that weren't subscribed to Game Pass playing this because it wasn't available early to those players. So all those people that I just mentioned, the one plus million people playing it what before launch, they bought the premium edition upgrade, which includes the expansion. So the expansion has already sold at least well over a million copies. So the attach rate comment makes no sense whatsoever because that was the only way to play the game before its official release day so like maybe he doesn't know that maybe he's not into the whole e- xbox ecosystem it doesn't know these things maybe he didn't research it i don't know you know i don't know how he works but like that comment didn't make sense so, so like like that and plus the premium edition upgrade people are buying that all the time i think that like it was a bit of a job because people like to hate on Microsoft because, you know, they have Game Pass. You get games day one. There's this rhetoric where people go, hey, these gamers don't buy games. But if over one million people were buying your expansion before the game bloody launched, that tells me to believe that people were really wanting to play this. So, like, again, that comment made no bloody sense. It wasn't even researched at all. Maybe he didn't remember, but it it threw me off a bit because it's like that made headlines, <laughs> you know. Uh, so unless you bought the fancy collector's edition, you had to get the premium edition upgrade. So that's that. Um, people have been out for Starfield since before it came out. We all know why. Uh, it wasn't because of the frame rate. It was because it was exclusive to Xbox. And I find it kind of funny that all of these articles that were against Starfield, te- like talking about how like can Starfield ever recover? It's like Starfield was a success. Like people from Xbox have said, it's a financial success. It was a big game in development for a long time, and it was a success. And people just don't like these facts because it launched in Game Pass, all right? And a lot of these reviews that, or just say people that were bashing the game. Uh, I find it funny that the straw that broke the camel's back when it came to, uh, you know, the Bethesda way of game development and, you know, the way the game plays, basically Bethesda games, was just just so happened to be the game that was exclusive to Xbox. It wasn't Fallout 4. It wasn't Fallout 76, even though that had a big controversy when it came out. No, no, it was Starfield, the game that actually offers the best gameplay to date in a Bethesda game. It was the least buggiest Bethesda game, but people were all out for it since day one, um, which says everything. You know, I think Starfield is a fantastic game. Does it have its issues? Of course it does. Every game does. Like, hell, I babble on about Mass Effect basically every single day, and I could list you a thousand problems with that game. And I think that game is phenomenal. Starfield is an incredible RPG. And the best thing about this expansion, which is why I'm excited about it, is the handcrafted content. The handcrafted content is the best part of the main game. But, you, you know, you're in one of the major cities or doing the main quest lines, that's the best part, or the faction quests. This whole planet is handmade content, which that like, that's a lot of content. Again, we don't know how many hours is in this expansion, but they've described this expansion as being massive. And if it's a whole planet of you know, crafted content featuring, you know, faction quests, main quests, you know, new enemy types. Like I can I can bet this is gonna be a big expansion. It's gonna keep people entertained for a long time. And the you know, they recently reintroduced the, the rover. Uh so that's gonna help people get around this new planet. Uh, you can fly up and you know do your own thing, go and do other quests while the expansion does take place on this you know one planet. And I think the interesting thing about this expansion is that we haven't seen House Varun. Throughout the entire main game, we've only heard rumors about it. We didn't even know what it looked like, how people lived there, all that stuff. And it kind of reminds me of uh, House Harkonnen from uh, the Dune series. A very mysterious, ruthless race, uh, or should I say, like a group of people. And like, it's going to be a good game. I think, you know, Bethesda, they excel at making excellent storylines. Their expansions in the past have been good. Uh, as a huge Fallout fan, like Fallout 3 had amazing expansions. Like Mothership Zeta, one of the best expansions of all time, in my opinion. 
uh, in this expansion screams peak Bethesda. And I know people like to bash the game because, you know, it's all these planets and there's nothing to do, but like it's meant to be a realistic sci-fi, you know, style game. You don't you don't watch Interstellar to expect aliens, you know, popping around every corner. It's it's a realistic science fiction movie. And they're doing the same thing with this game. So while there are like aliens that are like wildlife, uh, you're not gonna have like Star Wars style battles and all that stuff, but uh, it's an exciting expansion. It's just around the corner. And again, if people have the you know the ultimate edition upgrade, I should say premium edition upgrade, they're gonna have it there. They don't even have to pay any more for it. I think uh, it's an exciting time for the game and gamers. And look, the, the game's gonna grow. We've just been we've been told for a while this is uh, the first expansion. Like we don't know when the next one's gonna be. I assume we're gonna get maybe one major premium expansion a year. Uh, but Bethesda, they have no plans on slowing down with this game, so it's clearly selling well, uh, other than it being performing well in Game Pass. So I wouldn't worry about this game at all, it's going to be good. 